Hi, this is Dawn, and this is just a short audio um, to discuss objectification and how it is at its root um, a part of what has led us astray in modern society, and it's been going on for eons, really. Um, but specifically, I want to talk about how objectification of the feminine embodiment of life has led to many, many distortions um, through centuries. The most obvious example of that would be the false dichotomy, the split that was created in terms of the perception of the feminine embodiment of the divine and the objectification that led to the interpretation of the feminine principle as either um sanctified and somehow um, above life, such as in the uh, divine mother archetype and the um, the uh, virgin principle. Um, and then on the opposite spectrum, the essentially um, identification of the feminine as uh, licentious or whore or uh, fallen. Um, this is um, often portrayed in terms of the Eve principle and also the um, interpretation of, for example, Mary Magdalene and others in history um, as associated with um, uh, the, quote, weaker sex. So there is a, an identification of the feminine as uh, weak, um, as fallen, as unable to overcome uh, temptation or, quote, desires of the flesh. And, and so there becomes an objectification um, as either virgin or whore, as either above the world um, or immersed in the world. And it's a false dichotomy, um, and neither, uh, neither is a representation of the whole feminine um, and the whole embodiment of what is both sacred and profane, or has been labeled as such, and what is both virtuous and of uh, pl pleasurable, let's say. And, and so I hope that my words are not confusing here. And so I, I'm asking you to just hear the, um, the pure intent of the principle that I'm trying to convey. I am um, not one who is able to um, fully grasp all of the and, and use necessarily the, the correct words. And so I don't want my words to be misinterpreted here. But what I, what I want us to um, do is to take a look at, um, and I'm speaking to the feminine, but it is equally true of the masculine representation. Um, and I may, I may speak to that in a separate place. But for now, I just want us to consider that that false dichotomy has led to um, much division through the, through the centuries and, and millennia. And it's something that is, um, has been operating at a subconscious level. I mean, sometimes it's very conscious and we can, can see that quite clearly um, when there is a direct um, correlation made to uh, those two um, opposite polarities in terms of the view of the feminine. But what the reason I'm actually recording this um, and sharing it, I mean, it seems probably going to seem like old news, like <laughs> like people are going to be like, yeah, duh. I mean, it's and it's not like this is new information, you know, to me, Dawn, or, you know, just to um, my view of what happens in... Um, in our time and has happened throughout history. And yet what I do want to say is that, um, that we are being invited to a 
radical reclamation of the whole of who we are, and that to do so and to make this passage into a new society into which we are um, currently being invited to, you know, to make this transition, it will require that we begin to honor what is beneath both of these stereotypical descriptions and uh, correct, it, we're being invited into a corrective action, into the um, really, really, really horrible out, outcomes and or results of such objectification, uh, in this case of women, but again, equally true of, of men and, and the masculine embodiment. And so just wanted to share that today. You know, where can you, whether you are male or female, uh, where can you take a look at some of your own tendencies to objectify the other based on these stereotypical identifications or objectifications. And what I want to suggest is that they, the polarities, these two polarities are equally damaging. They're equally damaging to us all because they, they, diminish the fullness of who we are. They somehow pit one aspect against the other, and that is a false dichotomy. And this has ramifications far beyond the way we look at men and women or any, you know, particular, um, particular person or particular group. It, it, the ramifications um, and the result of such objectification is a diminishment of the spirit of the source of life. It is a cheapening of the fullness of life. And we cannot have life and life to the full if we are to uh, operate unconsciously or allow such identifications and objectifications to operate and run in the background because it is a false program and it is the root of so much that has harmed so many in innocents in, through time in, in many, many, many different streams of, uh, and the manifestations of such an undercurrent that is not that is separate from life, that is, it's, it, it's essentially anti-life and, and anti-wholeness because it, it uh, perpetuates, again, this, uh, this uh, construct that is, has been separated out from the fullness of life itself. And it, it's a watering down of the fullness of, in this case, the feminine principle of life itself. And this is something that has harmed the the very spirit of femininity in this case, but, but more than that, the, the spirit of life, the spirit of wholeness, the spirit of fullness. 